So check it out. See my shirt? I got a custom made shirt just to go along with this video. Ah, I'm just kidding. Actually, this shirt was sent to me from Park Tool. They call it their party shirt. I thought it was great because it sort of looks like a tool board. I have tools all over my shirt. And a tool board is what the subject of today's video is. Tool boards, or sometimes they call them tool walls, are one of the best ways to use your tools if you have a home shop or if you're building a shop to work on your bikes with your most frequently used tools on a board, a tool board, next to where you work on your bike, near a workbench, hopefully. You have the tools on the wall, easy to access, easy to see which tool you need right there. And your workbench then is clear, so you can put all your parts on the workbench not get them mixed up with your tools. It's a very convenient, efficient way to work on bicycles. So today I'm going to show you some quick tips on how to make a custom tool board. By custom I mean for the tools that you have, for the bikes that you work on, you can make a tool board that will make the repairs on your bikes as efficient as possible. That's what we're going to get to coming right up. Tool boards are basically for hanging tools within easy reach. They only need to be big enough for your frequently used tools. Your rarely used tools can stay in drawers or a toolbox. How large to make your tool board depends on how much room you have for it and how many tools you plan to put on it. Ideally, it will be sized so that it's easy to reach the tools when you're working on bikes. It's best not to have to reach too high or walk away from the bike you're working on to grab the right tool. Typically, tool boards are attached to walls above a workbench, or they can be attached to the back of benches instead. The most popular material for making tool boards is probably pegboard. The evenly spaced holes in it make it easy to hang tools. You just need to buy the right pegboard tool hooks and holders for your tools. The advantage of pegboard is that it's easy to change the tool arrangement since the hangers and holders can be moved around into different holes. The disadvantage is that the holders must be placed according to the evenly spaced holes. This means that you can't group tools as closely together as you might wish. And some toolboard hangers and holders may fit loosely and can come out when you remove tools, which is annoying. That's why most bike shops use plywood for their tool boards. With it, you can put tools wherever you wish and you only need nails for hangers and simple wooden tool holders you can make. This lets you group your tools close together, making them easier to access and allowing even smaller tool boards to hold a full selection of tools. A great setup for bike repair. Also, without all the holes and holders like pegboard requires, Plywood tool boards look simpler and cleaner too. For these reasons, in this video I'm focusing on making plywood tool boards. I usually use 3 quarter inch plywood and 8 penny finishing nails, which don't rust and have small heads, easy for slipping tools over. Plywood comes in different grades. It's best to have a smooth surface for tool boards so you never get splinters grabbing tools. I recommend painting it with a semi-gloss white paint. Paint will keep your workshop bright and with semi-gloss paint it's easy to clean up any grease that may get on your tool board. Also semi-gloss paint makes it easy to draw outlines around your tools if you decide to do that. Before I forget, I want to mention that I have other videos on setting up a professional bicycle toolbox in case that's of interest. Be sure to watch to the end for a link to that video. So how do you make a cool tool board, a custom tool board for yourself? It's actually pretty easy. You take the tools that you use, maybe you have them in a toolbox or maybe you just carry them on your bike, but you're gonna take those tools and turn them into the basis of your home workshop and your tool board or your tool wall. And what I want you to do is take those tools and start working with them, but lay them out on the bench. So if you have a series of wrenches that you use on a regular basis, I want you to lay them out on the bench. You don't have a tool board yet, so take them out of your toolbox and lay them on your bench. Take your pliers, your scissors, cutting tools, put them on the bench, the screwdrivers that you use, any bicycle specific tools, fork wrenches, chain tools, Whatever you have, lay them out on a flat surface, your workbench, 
and then I want you to work with them for a while. I want you to work with them so you get used to and learn which tools you use the most often. Those are the tools that you're going to want to put on your tool board in the most convenient location. For example, an Allen wrench. This is a three-way Allen wrench, a four, five, six, one of the most common tools you use on a lot of modern bikes. So this I put very close to me, right in the center of the tool board. So as you're working with your tools on a workbench, you put that tool in the middle. Maybe not at first, but as you realize which ones you use the most, put that up front, take the tools you don't use that often, push them off to the side. They can be a little further away. So the idea is when you're working on your bike, on your repair stand, you just want to reach and be able to reach the tool that you use the most often without having to stretch too far. When you lay out your tool board, you want to think about the space that you have for a tool board, where you can put it. And if you had a lot of space, like you had a high ceiling and a big wall near where you work on your bike, ideally you wouldn't put the tools up too high because you'd have to stretch or climb up on something to get them. Ideally, the tools are right there, easy to access. That's the way to think about it anyway. Small tool boards can be very efficient. You don't have to put all your tools up there. Tools that you don't use very frequently, you could leave them in a toolbox or in a drawer. But the tool board is for the tools that you use a lot. And that's the way to lay it out on your workbench. As you use the tools, just put them down there and over a period of time, you'll have a pretty good idea what tools you use the most. I like and I recommend putting tools that are used together, together. For example, you cut cables with a bicycle cable cutter probably. And then when you cap the cables with the little end caps, you might crimp them with a pair of diagonal cutters. You cut the housing maybe with diagonal cutters. And you might use pliers to tension cables. So these tools could all be together. As you get your layout of tools done, and they're on the bench like this, there's like a map or a blueprint of what your tools are going to be arranged like on your tool board. Now you can take a picture of them, or if you can memorize it, you can then take the tools move them out of the way and all you need is a piece of cardboard or heavy duty paper and now you can lay your tools out back the way you had them decided that that was the optimum arrangement Once you have your tools on the cardboard, then you have a way to transfer your map very accurately onto your tool board. It's just a matter of marking the tool positions on the cardboard. I've just got a random selection of tools here. You'll have your tools. Hopefully you'll have worked with them enough to be very happy with how you have them arranged and which tools you've selected to be on your tool board. And the piece of cardboard that you choose needs to be at least as big as the tool board that you're making. And, you know, you can take a picture of the tool arrangement on your cardboard, but it's easier to transfer it from here onto the tool board if you mark the tools. So you can lay your tools down and then you can trace a line around the tools with a sharpie. That's a good way to do it take a little while but once you have them marked you'll remember where every tool goes when you take the tools off. I like to use simple tool holders made out of wooden blocks. See the one here on the left and the one over here on the right Look how many tools you can get on there. So this one is just a piece of wood. It's basically cut out of a 2x4. And I've drilled it full of holes to accept screwdrivers. And then in the front, 
I've made holders and on the sides. It's just a very convenient way to hold a lot of tools close together, easy to access, and the tool holder is just a piece of wood with holes drilled in it. This one over here holds the pliers, and they're pretty easy to hold. If you just drill a hole in the top, you can put the handle of the tool right in there, and it puts it in a perfect, perfect position to pick up the tool and hold the tool and use the tool. And you can make other types of holders, like I put a little fender bracket on here to hold the tape measure. And I put a ratchet in there, you just drill a hole big enough for the handle. So they're very handy. That one's just made out of a 2x4, and it's just screwed to the tool board. So for the holders, when you design the template, you lay out all your tools. You don't have to outline the tools. All you have to do is make a mark on the tool board for where the holder's going to go. Now you can buy ready-made holders for tools. A lot of companies that make tools provide sets of Allens or Torx or drivers and they'll have a holder and you can screw those holders right onto your tool board too. And if you're going to use holders, all you have to do is find the spot on your template and just draw around the holder on the template to show where it goes. This is just a mock-up to show how to use the template to mark your tool positions on the plywood. Your template should have all your tools and holders positions marked. Notice the dots under the tools. These are where the nails go that the tools hang on. To figure out how to best hang certain tools on nails, experiment by holding the nail and trying different tool placement. Sometimes only one nail is enough. Sometimes you need several nails to hang a tool. Now to finish your tool board, you take your template and you put it up against the plywood that's going to be your tool board. I haven't cut my plywood down because I'm not actually making a tool board. I already have my tool board, but your plywood would be cut to whatever size your tool board is. And then you would put your template against the tool board. And you can see that I have my tools. And I have these dots that I've put on here for where the tools are going to hang. And what you want to do is transfer these dots for the hanging positions onto the plywood. Now, if your plywood is attached to the wall already and it's sturdy enough to pound against, you could simply put nails in already, pound the nails in, and then when you pull the plywood off, all the nails would be left and you just hang your tools up. Or you could use a pointy object like an awl or anything you have to poke holes into the plywood where the tools are going to hang so that you can see them when you pull the template off. Now you'll be able to figure it out because you have your map and when you pull the template away you look at the plywood there should be holes relate exactly where they were in your template if you do it this way. Also if you have a, a tool holder that you're going to put on say you're going to have your screwdrivers in a holder instead of hanging on nails like in this uh, mock-up here you would poke through and mark the corners of the holder so you know exactly where that's going to go. Although it'll make sense because the holder will go in an uh, open area on your template. When you pull the template off, you'll see the open area on your tool board. So once all those nails are in place, or all the marks for the nails are in there, and the marks for the holders are in there, all you have to do is remove the template and pound in nails and attach any holders and hang your tools. And voila! You'll have a tool board just like mine. Okay, there you have it. Making a custom tool board is a fun project that provides easier access to your tools and gives a professional look to your home workshop setup that will impress everyone who sees it. If you make a custom tool board, I'll be interested to hear how it goes and any tips and tricks you come up with, so please leave a comment. And if you have any questions, just ask and I'll be happy to answer them in a reply back to you. Now, right after this, there'll be a link to see that toolbox video that I made showing how to set up tools for a pro toolbox, which you might like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.